tip wouldn't, you know, just wouldn't have any chance of danger. And um, all of the silverware and plates, um, not necessarily, but usually what we did for plates was you just had a, you know, the shelf, which were usually always slide in. And then we just made sort of stanchions. Um, could have been out of wood, could have been out of plexiglass. That all of the bowls would sit in one pile and the plates in another. And that typically worked really well. The um, mugs, for example, coffee mugs or coffee cups, you know, it was just a matter of cutting out the shape of the, of the uh, mug or whatever, and then a little recess for the handle, again, such that it went in a hole deep enough to hold it, and when the bottom of the cup or the mug hit the bottom shelf, there was enough gap that the handle was firmly in place and wouldn't, wouldn't rattle, but, uh, you know, and that was, was, you know, pretty straightforward, but where it really got much more difficult and time-consuming, and again, it's one of the things that I really enjoy doing was uh, silverware because you have, you know, a lot of times people would buy sets of, uh, what are they like, uh, servings for 12, I guess, was kind of the norm. And they would usually buy two because they, they tried, if they were at all practical as owners, to have uh, spares. But uh, in any event, in that case, in order to maximize the storage space and efficiency, we would make, um, if you take a regular kitchen drawer, galley drawer, um, they would typically be four inches inside the drawer. And what we did is you would make layers, uh, usually out of uh, in this case, wood, and then you would custom fit all of the silverware into um, shapes, cutouts, slots, whatever it required. I mean, a knife was typically just a sort of a slanted block of wood with saw cuts in it so that the knives would stand up, and then, uh, you know, shapes for spoons and shapes for all those other uh, bits and pieces, but the idea, again, that you didn't open the drawer and there was just you know, sort of like at home, a pile of silverware. Um, but you could put in multiple layers and you could fit it. And very often we would make it out of the same wood that the boat was being made out of, cherry, mahogany, maple, walnut, whatever. And uh, then we take it down to the uh, upholster shop and they would fit uh, the inside if need be, with um, some kind of felt-looking mess. It's very thin, but it's uh, anti-tarnish stuff. Um, we tried for a while to do it in a cabinet shop, but you know, working working with material of any description is best left for people who understand it. Because we would mummick it up terribly, and you know, and they would just come back and shake their heads and do the old basil faulty and take it back and do it correctly. So um, so that was that was the way that whole process sort of worked. But has nothing at all to do with cleaning a headlight, but if it wasn't talking for that, then I'd be standing here talking about something that was even less interesting. So um, there you go. So all right. So, I think, I think we're about done with that. I'm going to grab a clean cloth and see if we can do a little buffing on it.
these are the uh, Harbor Freight microfibers. I mean, they're very inexpensive, and I keep piles of them around, but they're not really microfibers. They're, uh, I mean, I guess technically they are, but um, if you ever use a, a decent quality microfiber and use those, they're completely different, but they're, they're good for rags. Boy, that coffee sure tastes good this morning. plastic um, rear window which you know I was so fortunate with that car when I got it because the, the people that had owned it had taken very good care of it they were an elderly couple and it was always garaged so that rear window never uh, never yellowed and they have a couple of notorious problems with them namely the piece of the, the uh, half round plastic trim that goes around fails and um, there's really not much you can do about it. And, you know, I tried a few things, and like everybody, it, was, it just wasn't successful. And um, so uh, this, uh, this is the KIT, K-I-T, scratch remover, which is, you know, is for um, dull paint finishes, looks like new, you can use it on paint, fiberglass, and plastic, and I actually found that on um, that, that rear plastic window that this was the most effective, and you think, well, yeah, it's, it's probably got more grit in it. Is that really what you want? And the answer is, well, uh, it, it never, that n never that I could tell had any detrimental effect on that plastic, which, you know, that's a very, very, very soft plastic. And, uh, you know, a couple of times a year, I would just use this product on it, and it always, always served me well. And I also have the Meguiar's, and I suspect, but I don't know, that the Meguiar's may be a uh, finer paste, finer grit, finer whatever it is that um, is doing the doing the polishing and um, and it it never did quite as well for me as this so it's not that it's in any way an inferior product I think it just has a different application from what I was trying to use it for if that makes sense because I've always had very good results with Meguiar's and um, again couple of my earlier video series where I was doing the, the paint restoration on the E90, um, I had switched over to, uh, to Griot's Garage and there was, you know, I had a couple of, of uh, viewers ask me, well, why'd you do that? You know, I've seen you using the Meguiar's and things and the answer is really very simple. It had nothing to do with the quality or anything of the Meguiar's, but being the type of person that I am, and I'll leave it at that, um, I really like the fact that the Griot's has a system that is not, I mean, in near as I can tell anyway, they don't have a professional line and a home line and a whatever kind of line, and everything in the Griot's line is compatible. It all works together regardless of what it is you get. So to do paint restoration for me that was really important because I could have researched and bought 15 different individual products for Meguiar's and they all would have been good products but you know they, they may not necessarily be compatible between so uh, with the Griot's uh, for me it was just kind of a slam dunk and in, and in hindsight I'm really glad that I did that because I did the uh, you know sort of the first time around um, I used a, 
a fairly um, mild uh, technique on the paint because it's black and um, and it really didn't get a lot of the scratches and the um, drag marks out so now well cars laid up right now but you know the next time that I go about it I'm uh, I don't have any concern that I can you know wash the car give it a good claying and then go right back and start over again but start with a start with a more aggressive um, product and then continue to work back up and that it's it's not going to have any adverse effect on whatever was left on the car so um, so that was why and they had a uh, the kit comes with a really nice uh, DA um, random orbit polisher cleaner and at the time uh, at the time I made that purchase uh, Meguiar's I don't think they did I think they kind of went from the one you put on your drill to kind of the professional model and I think since even Griot's has got several models and versions and things now and I'm, I'm fairly certain that uh, uh, McGuire's does too. Well, anyway, that's enough talking about all that. But uh, we're going to call that a good job. So, there it is. No scratches, no yellow that I can see. And uh, I'm just going to clean up the rest of it now. And. Uh, you know, one of these days, not too long, hopefully you'll see the finished video when the car is all back together. I'm excited about it. Um, I think I'm making some progress with getting some of the detective work done. And, uh, you know, definitely making some progress oh, that was good, with uh, uh, getting the money together for it, you know, like we anyway, I don't know about like everybody, but we uh, try very hard to live to a budget and uh, you know, the E90 being a project car and not an everyday car, um, when things start to get a little bit expensive, uh, then we just have to save up a little bit of money and uh, in fact this week while I'm still here this week before leaving next week, I now have to replace the uh, uh, front windshield in the uh, on the Civic and um, it's one of those you know covered under the insurance things and they're they're going to come right out to the office where I work and do it right in the parking lot so you know no uh, no expense there but nevertheless it's uh, you know just trying to have a budget and stick to a budget so that as I talked about earlier Retirement may be sooner rather than later, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Uh, this may or may not have been any help, but I tried to at least tell you what I was using. Again, it was just the 3M wet dry paper. I used 1000 and 2000, and uh, in the end, I would say I would not go back to using the uh, the restoration kit. I suspect it needs perhaps to be um, used on a drill where it moves faster and then so finished back up when I did with the 2000 and then in this case went with the kit scratch out work beautiful and uh, I think if there's anything to be learned there is what you're kind of looking for is that even sort of white haze which I think means you evenly scratch the surface and then buff it out all right so that's it. Thank you all for watching, um, subscribing. If you are, I uh, still do have lots of the hair BMW decals, so if you're interested in one, I've uh, had the opportunity to send out two this week after my uh, sort of my uh, get back into the swing of things video last weekend. So I uh, got one going out to uh, Rusty Glove Box, and uh, the other is, uh, is a new subscriber, and I'm sorry I don't remember their name. Um, boy, I wish I could. I try. Uh, but I, I don't off the top of my head. But uh, in any event, uh, 
Thanks. Catch you again.